Hey everybody, this is Lee Newton, and today I want to talk a little bit about wind. So, wind can be pretty cool, especially if you're on the north side of Vancouver Island, up by Port Hardy. This is Cape Scott Wind Farm, and they produce enough electricity to power 30,000 homes on Vancouver Island. And this is actually about half the island. On my property, wind isn't as useful. There are trees with shallow roots, there's overcrowding, there's dead and dying trees, and we've had a lot of cleanup over the last few years. So here's my worry. I can see this giant tree from my bedroom window, and every time it gets really windy, I keep thinking that it's going to come through my roof. So I'm not going to climb that tree and take a giant tape measure with me. However, I'm going to use math and similar triangles to find the height indirectly. So first off, if I have congruent triangles, that means exactly the same shape and exactly the same size. But that's not what we're using today. We want to look at similar. So similar is the same shape, but it can be different sizes. And the nice part is we can use proportions of their side lengths to solve problems. So look at this example. If I have the sun beating down, it's going to create a shadow. And as long as you catch that shadow at exactly the same time, those triangles are going to be similar. So in this example, the clock tower has a shadow of 45 meters, while the meter stick has a shadow of 0.75 meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a proportion because the ratios of the height to the shadows are equal to each other. From there, I would use cross products, and so I would multiply across 1 times 45 and then divide by 0.75 to get a total height of 60 meters. So the only problem with this method in Bellingham is we don't really have very much sun, which is great for mushroom hunting, but not really for shadow math. This next method doesn't rely on shadows, but it's still a way to find the height indirectly of an object. The first thing you need to do is find a mirror. Then you're going to place that mirror a chosen distance away from the object. And you're going to make sure that's face up. Then you're going to look into the mirror and back up until you can see the top of the object in the mirror. The distances that you can take are the distance from your eye to the ground, from you to the middle of the mirror, and then from the middle of the mirror to the base of the object. These triangles are similar because when light reflects into a mirror, it reflects out at the same angle. You're standing at 90 degrees as well as the object, which means the third angle is the same. So these triangles have to be similar, and so we can use a proportion to solve for the height. Once our proportion is set up, we can take and do cross products, 6 times 6 divided by 3, and we're going to get a height of 12 feet. So the first thing I had to do was find a mirror, which is probably the hardest part. I couldn't even find one, so I had to use the lid of a prickly pear body butter container, which is shiny enough to work. And so what I did is I placed that 40 feet away from the tree, I backed away from it, it was only about two and a half feet, and the distance that my eye is to the ground is 64 inches. So here's my question. Should I worry about the tree falling on my house? So pause the video now and do the math before I give you the answer. So here's the answer to my quandary. First off, set up similar triangles with the mirror in the middle. The distance from the mirror to the tree is 40, distance from the mirror to me is 2.5, and my eye height is 64 inches. So I need to turn that into feet by dividing by 12. So I get 5 and 1 third feet. So now I'm going to set up the proportion, 5 and 1 third over 2.5 equals x over 40. Solving the proportion gives me 85 and 1 third feet. So is it valid for me to be concerned about this tree lingering over my house? Absolutely! If that tree fell from the base, it would take out about 25 feet of my roof. So the moral of the story is, don't risk your safety to find the heights indirectly. Just use math and proportions to find the heights using similar triangles. So go check your trees today. You'll sleep a little bit more sound. And then in the next video, we're going to use trigonometry and clinometers to find the heights with even a little less work. 
See you then.